Hey everybody, welcome to another digital making at home video. Um, this one here, I'm with my partner in crime, Xavier. Say hi, man. Hi. And uh, today we're going to be making a little simple archery game for beginners in Scratch. Uh, it's a really nice one to start off with because it does some simple things that are quite important across video games when you want to make them. Things like sending broadcasts, animating sprites, uh, working with random numbers, things like that. So, Xavier and I have done this project one time before. Yep. Uh, and so we're going to lead you through it. Xavier's a bit of a pro at it by now. And so we're going to lead you through the archery project a bit at a time. As we go, we're going to tick all the boxes off in our project site, and you can tick along with us. Uh, so I'll just bring up our uh, web page. Okay, Xavier, if you'd like to drive up the top. That's it, mate. So we're making games today. So we'll click on games where it says games up there. That's the one. There we go. And we want the archery game, the one in the middle at the top there, with a little robot. You like the robot guy, don't you? Yeah, he's cool. Okay, so here comes our project. Once it loads up, there we go. So if we scroll down a little bit, we should get a demo. So Xavier, do you want to like click the green flag and tell everybody what the game does when they're finished? Yeah. What will it do? Um, at the end, um, your circle's gonna um go around the screen mm -hmm. on your target. Like it's doing here, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then if you press space bar, um, anywhere, um, it would give you um a high score. Um, or low score um, and you can change it and you can also make sounds which we're going to do at the end yeah we'll do the sounds at the end won't we yeah, yeah when we get some time cool good introduction man so we don't need anything for this do we just need scratch and a computer um you don't need to have a scratch account but xavier's got one so when we go across you'll see it will log straight into his my stuff space um but we'll talk you through that when it happens so we click introduction that's it and it will take us through to the next page well done xavier and then we click that top link at the, where the purple one, so rpf.io slash archery on, and we'll get that project come up. So we'll load our project, uh, and you can see at the top right there where Xavier's username is, and show everybody's there. So he's logged in, uh, which means that Squanchy. at the top of his... Squanchy, that's you. So at the top of your project there where it says remix, that's it. So if you don't have the remix button, that's probably because you're not logged into Scratch yet, but that's absolutely fine. You can log in at the end and still save your work. You don't have to do it right now, that's totally cool. So we've got all our workspace in here, don't we, Xavier? So show everybody where the sprites are. Sprites are down here, we've got an arrow sprite. Where's our backdrop? Here. Fantastic, and what happens when we click on our backdrop? And it will show you up here. It does, doesn't it? So that's where our code's gonna go, isn't it? So at the moment we've got our... So how do we get it to show the arrow? Because that's where we wanna put our first bits of code, isn't it, on the arrow? Fantastic, and we can see at the top right there, that it's got a picture of your little arrow, so we know that's where our code's gonna go, so that's good. Cool, dude, we're on our way. Nice. So let's go back to the uh, project site. That's the one. And we want to roll down a little bit. So there's our code. So we can click that top box there, that's it. There we go. You guys click it too to make sure that you know it's done. We want to work back on ourselves. So the next part, we need those two blocks of code. What color are they, Xavier? Golden. Golden. So let's go back to Scratch. We want some of the golden ones. And those are our events okay. blocks. That's it. So when green flag click, that's a nice universal starter, isn't it? So we use that so that when we click green flag, everything that needs to start all at once just goes bang and off it goes. And then we broadcast a message. So Xavier's going to add a new message because we don't want message one to be our message. What do we want? A new arrow. New arrow. So let's type that in. Xavier's been practicing his typing. He's getting much better at it these days. Good. Awesome, bro. Hit enter. Cool. And so now our message says new arrow and we've got our green flag clicked. Cool. Alright, so go to the instructions. And let's tick that box. And then we can put our next bit of code. So we need a yellow, a blue, and a purple. So go back to your archery remix up there. That's it. Cool. And we want a yellow. So when I receive. That's it. It's an events block. So when I receive message one. When I this one, drag him into our workspace, and then when we do our receive, it has to be what? We don't want message one, what do we want in our, in our golden block we just dropped in? What should it say, not um, message one? What does our broadcast yeah. block say? Good, new arrow, man, that's it. So pull that down, they have to be the same. If they're not the same, it won't work, okay? Because what we've got now is we've got our broadcast new arrow, so that's kind of like someone shouting go, isn't it, to everybody. So when I click the green flag, it will broadcast the words new arrow. It will shout new arrow, and everything that hears new arrow then starts its code off. And so we've got that broadcast, and now we have the receiver. So anytime something has to receive, it needs to hear that same message. Cool. Next bit, go to. 
So we want to go to X and Y. This one. There we go. Do you remember where we wanted to send it? Where did we want it to go to? Do you remember what the numbers were? Uh, yes. Yeah, pop them in. Minus one. Oh, let's see. Click in there again. There we go. Minus 150. And then what was the other one? You push tab. That's it. Nice. Pro tip there from Xavier. If you just push tab, it will take you through to the next place where you can write numbers. You don't have to keep clicking all the time. Once you're in one, just push tab, and you can just tab along to all of them. And then we wanted a, what was the last one? Set size. Very good, mate. Two. What number was in there? What number set size to 400? So we want it to be four times as big as it is now. So but can, can we do like 500 or four, just 400? We'll do 500 if you want, mate. It's your project. It'll be a bit bigger. Cool. Hit enter. You can do um, probably like up to a 500 because you don't, if you do it like 1,000, that'll be really, that'll be too big. It'll be massive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't want to go too big. But a little bit bigger is fine. And the people at home can change their numbers too, can't they, to whatever they want. We always say that, don't we? It can be whatever you want. It's your game. Cool. So let's go back to our instructions. Sweet. And we'll tick that box because we've done it. And then it says, click the green flag to test your game. So tick that box. We'll go back and test it now. Green flag. So before we click it, what should it do? What does our code say it will do? We're going to click the green bigger. flag. It will make it bigger and then do what else to it? Go around the screen. Not yet, it won't. We've only told it to do one thing. What will it do? It will... Go to five minus one hundred fifty. Minus one hundred and fifty, minus one hundred and fifty. So that's somewhere down here in the bottom corner. So if you click the green flag, it should go to the bottom corner and get big. Bosh. Perfect. Nice dude. Next steps. Okay, instructions. So we've tested it, it works. Now we need to add these last two blocks here. So what colour is that forever? Uh orange. It's orange, isn't it? That's our control block. Control block. For control, yeah. Ever. Sweet. And then the next one was another blue one, wasn't it? Blue. It was a glide to block. So That's blue for motion, motion. yeah, because it's moving. So we need a glide, not a go to, and a glide to the next one down, I think. This one? Uh, well, we can do that one, but the code itself has a different block in it. It has the one underneath, yeah. And so that just means we can be a bit more specific about where it goes. Random position, it might go all the way in the top corner, which is no good, is it? It's nowhere near your target, make your game a bit harder. So we need some operator blocks for those, the green ones. So we're going to click our green operator blocks, and we want that pick random. Pick. Yeah. So when you drag it across, Zay, do you want to show everybody how you know where it's going to go? Because, like, minus 150, it, um, around it, it would have glowing light, um, which mm -hmm. is white. Awesome. And so then you just let go, and then it would stick into the blue one. Cool. Show them again the next one. Show them what you mean by the glow. The round the Take it away again. Oh, there it goes. And there it is. Cool. So if you let go, it will drop into that hole in it. Cool. So click your first random number in the green one, that first one in the green hole in your code. Next one in the green hole now. Oh, that one you can change too, but we'll change these first. So what was it? Do you remember? No. It was minus 150. And then... 150, so push tab, and then 150, and then tab, and then minus 150, and then 150 in the last one, so tab, and then 150. Cool. And then our glide one, so if you click go now, we'll show everybody what that, that does. So if you click your green flag, it should start moving around the screen. There we go. Let's now, make it quicker. We That's can make really it quicker. Small. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you remember how to make it faster? How? I think it's looks. Uh, no, if you've already got the code there. You've got to change one of the Trolls. numbers in your code here. So you've got to change one of these numbers. This one. That's the one. So we want to make it a smaller number than one. So we want to make it decimal. So 0 0.5. 0.5. Cool. So 0, full stop, and a 5. Full stop, and a 5. You enter, and you should see your thing go faster. All right. So let's... Go back to our instructions now and check to make sure we're right. So 0 0.5, minus 150, 150, minus 150, 150. Cool. And we see now again our arrow move randomly around the stage. We did our test. So we click tick and we move to shooting arrows. Sweet. We're on our way, man. We're killing it. So this one here, we want to add a little bit of code to our arrow again. We've got two different colors. Colors we're using? 
Um, we're using golden. Golden orange. So we need a when space key press and a stop block. So let's go back there. So we want a golden events block when the key pressed. That's it. When space pressed, drag it across. And then we want a control block. Orange ones. That's it. And down the bottom, we want the stop. It says stop all at the moment, but we're going to change that to be something else. So stop. And then what's the next one? Other scripts. Pow, that's it. And you see the block changed, and now it's got a little link on the bottom again it didn't have before. So let's go back to our instructions and see if that's what we got. See if we got it right. Other scripts in Sprite. Cool. Okay, so this time, when we press the space bar, it should stop our arrow from moving. So let's go back and check that. Go back to Archery Remix. That's it. Push space bar. And it should just stop. Sweet. Next step, let's go back to our instructions. Okay, now we need another control block, a repeat. Oh, next one, the one above that is the one we've done. That's it. So now we need a repeat, a, an orange repeat, and a purple looks change size one. So repeat, there it is. That's the one, click on the bottom. That has to be 50. Does have to be 50, very good. Excellent, and then now in the purple part we want looks. And we want it to change what? If you know what you're changing, change our size. So down a bit, change size by. Change, change size by. That's the one. But we don't want it to change by 10. We want it to change by minus 10. Look, see what happens when it gets big by 10. Look, whoa, it got massive. We want it to change by minus 10. So let's make it minus 10. So if you push space by now, it should shrink. Oh, hang on a second, let's fill that number, there you go, hit space. That's better. If you hit it again, what's gonna happen? Really? It'll shrink again, very good, there it goes. Now we have to do the numbers. Yes, let's go back and have a look. Okay, so, test our game again. We push the space bar and we saw our arrow got smaller as it was moving towards the target, fantastic. Once our arrow is at the target, we can tell the player how many points they have scored. So we wanna set up points for each color, don't we? So we need an if, a sensing block, which is the light blue, and a purple one. So let's get our control if. If then, that's it. Drag it down. So now, what we'll do is, is yep, clip it to the bottom. We'll grab that piece of code that you're working on where it says when space key pressed and drag it up to the top of the screen because this one's going to get pretty long in a minute, isn't it? So drag that one here, drag it up to the top. That's it, all the way up to the top. Oh, not that far over. Back to the middle. Keep going. Nope. It's a bit fiddly and a scratch. There we go, that'll do it. Okay, so if what? If what happens? If when key press? No, we don't want a key press. What are we setting up now? So we've pressed the key, the arrow shoots forward. We want to work out where it stopped based on what? What gives different points? Um, the colours. The colours, right? So we want to see if it's touching a certain colour. So let's go to our sensing blocks, the light blue ones. Light blue. Cool, we want if touching color. It's the second one from the top. It's got a purple spot in it at the moment. Okay, I'm gonna clip that in there. Don't worry about the purple part right now, that's fine. We can fix that. So if you click the purple and you click the eyedropper, it will let you choose what color you want, right? So what color do we want? Yellow. So how do you know you're gonna get yellow? Because um, cause, um, the yellow circle around the... Cool. So the circle around our reticule tells us exactly what color we're gonna get, isn't it? And we click away, don't play with any of the sliders, remember? Because we did that before, didn't we? And it messed up because we changed the transparency of our yellow and it wasn't the same. So if touching yellow, then go to looks and we want say the top one. Yeah, drag that in. That's it, and what do we want it to say? If touching the yellow one, how many points do you get? Thousand. thousand points, sweet. Ten thousand, Ten thousand points. Wow, man, you you very generous with points today. So click on say hello. Click where it says hello, and you can type in there how many points. Five thousand points. Yeah. All right. So let's type the word points after, just so that we know. So now. We've got one. So if we touch the yellow one, it would give us five hundred points, but it won't do anything for any of the other colors. 
Should we show everyone your duplicate pro tip? All right, show everyone how to duplicate your if block with everything Oops. inside it. Left. You click the right mouse button. Right. Yeah, on the block though, you need to, don't you? On the if part. And you get duplicate. And you can click that onto the bottom, all the way to the bottom. That's it, let go. And now we want how many colors have we got on our target? Yellow, red, blue, black, black white. white. How many? Five. Five, okay. So let's do the next color. What's the next color we need? Awesome. And then we want to say, not 5,000 points, how many points for red? 3,000. Go for it. So you want three. One more. Cool, hit enter. All right, so now we've got that. So how do we duplicate it again? You press near the if, then you... Oh, you missed the block. I reckon. Sweet. What's the next one? Do you want to do a sneaky trick? Duplicate the red one. So up a bit, left where it says if. No, no, no. You just get the blue part if you duplicate. That's it. There. So if you do that, right click, duplicate, and you get two. You get everything underneath the block that you try and duplicate. So if you did it up here, you would duplicate all five of them again. So we've got. Yellow, red, blue, change this red one to what color? What's the next color from blue? Black, awesome. And then... Cool. Oh no, there you go. And what's the last one? What colour should that be? Don't forget to generate, we don't need to dupe it, just change the colour. You got five. Last one was 500 points. 100 points. Cool. So now, if we start our code with our green flag, it should start moving our thing around randomly. You can press baseball in it. That's awesome. So let's go back to our instructions. Okay, so go down a bit. So now we can add a sound to it, can't we? Yeah. Yeah. So let's go back. Go to the purplish pinky sound. Sound, that's it. The purplish pinky one's a sound. And we want to, you're going to put cheer across. You've got start sound cheer. That's already there. You can just drag them into all the ones that are good. And we can add our other sound, can't we? Because you like to add a loser noise for someone that doesn't get it. So put it above the say part. That's it. So the reason it's important to put it above the say part, Zay, is because we want it to start the sound and then say the thing for two seconds, right, while the sound is playing. If we had them in the other order, it would say the thing for two seconds, and after it had said your points, that's when the cheer would start. I'm doing two because they're... They're the only good ones, are they? Yeah. Really? Not You're harsh, really. man. Not really, but them two are the worst. Yeah? It's okay. Okay, okay. So we're going to add another sound. All right, so go, go up to the sounds tab. Sound. Sounds, that's Next it. To... And we'll import a new sound, eh? Let's what? pick a new one. <laughs> we'll import a new one, that's it. We're going to cheer the sound. What do you want to have for the loser sound? What do you reckon? What about this one? Slap down. Yeah, now it's a proper loser noise, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so let's go back to our code tab. Down, that's it, code. 
So now you've got start sound bonk, so you can drag that into the other ones. That's it, above C. That's the one. Look down. That's it. And you need to scroll down a little bit. That's the one. And pop it in above where it says say. Sweet. So now when you click the green flag. You can make a big screen. Yeah, yeah, go for it. This one. Bonk. Next one. So let's shrink it down. We'll add the part where it starts the game again now. Are you going to have another shot? Yeah. All right, go on then. Oh. You're, so, you're so harsh, man. I thought that was a pretty good shot. You still got the bonk sound. All right, so let's go back to our instructions and see where we're at. So we can tick that box off. And the one above, well we haven't done that one because we didn't do the broadcast new arrow, that's the one we want to tick off. The one underneath. So let's untick it so we don't confuse ourselves. So now we need to broadcast. So go down, we need another block. Which one's the one that's circled in black? Broadcast new arrow. Right, and that will take us back to the top of the script again, won't it? Once it hears new arrow, it will start its own script all the way again. So that's an event block. That's the one. We want to broadcast, broadcast new, new arrow. arrow. That's it. Up, no, no, no. That's it. You don't want to broadcast and wait. That's the one. So now when you click go, you should be able to shoot your arrow and get a new arrow come straight up. Um, oh, that was close. Um, you're harsh, you're harsh. Here. Let me have a go. Ah, oh, I'm worse than you. Terrible. Nearly, man. All right, let's get. Should we check our instructions and see? Oh, that's it. We got there in the end. So let's go back to our instructions. Click, tick that box, and then it's onto the challenge part, which is different scores, which we already sort of did. So we already pushed through that. You know me? Because mm -hmm. you're a bit of a pro. So. We've got the what next thing there, so if you click that, what's next? So we can look at another project, but what I'm going to do is after we've done this one, man, and the people at home have done their project, I'm going to make a bunch of other short videos for them where you reckon they'll show them how to make like game over screens and start screens, how to do crazy things with sound. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's a different project. Should we try that one next? Cool. Okay, so we, me and Xavier are going to try this new project, um, but we'll catch you guys later. If yes, you want to see any of our, you want to do the football one? All right, man. Do you want to tell everybody they can see our videos on the internet whenever they want? Uh, yeah. Um, anytime you want, you can watch our videos. And like, if if you can do, if you've done Choc Taco Shark, is it still on there? Taco Shark. Well, that was the one we did before when we streamed yeah. live, wasn't it? Yeah, that one might be up there. We'll see. And we've already done this one. We just showed you, and then you can watch it anytime you want on the. It that's right, they just go to rpf.io slash home and they can see all our projects on there and they can submit their own work, right? Wouldn't you like to see some projects that other kids made that was like your one? That'd be cool, right? Tell them to send us their stuff. You can send us your games um, um, like we showed you ours yeah. and then we can probably watch yours and you can teach everyone else some, some games you've made our coding. Awesome. All right, buddy, we'll sign off today, eh? Yeah. All right. Later team. Bye everybody. Bye. Bye.